Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know why we're all here. <clears throat> um, the return of Omar Khadr has been an issue. Uh, it's been in the press, and there seems to be, uh, certainly from the left, a great uh, impetus of activity trying to get him back as quickly as possible. Um, Ezra Levant wrote a book, and it was with reference to uh, this particular issue itself, and it sparked the attention of Shobi Kapoor, who felt that because she lived in Scarborough, which is the same area where Cotter and his family live, that she felt that this was a, uh, a security issue and a cause for concern. And I guess, you know, to, to maybe phrase the uh, issue from an old movie called Network, which some of us may remember, uh, where we saw Howard Beale, the uh, actor, uh, go insane on stage yelling out to the community, that he was damn mad and he didn't want to take it anymore. Now, I think Shobi, you'll see she has a wonderful personality. She doesn't get mad, but she goes to work. And so she's been active uh, in promoting this petition. And thank goodness for Ezra and the media that they've recognized uh, what her petition was all about and have been able to promote it on air uh, in a variety of different media uh, areas as well. So, And of course, uh, on the blogs as well. So. The fact that we're sitting here today is really due to her dedication and her diligent work. So without further uh, ado, uh, Shobi, I'm going to ask you to come forward, please, and tell us in your words what it is that uh, prompted you to uh, uh, engage in the petition and bring us here today. Thank you, Julius. I think you, you took about 90% of my speech, but um, I'm just going to speak from, from my heart and uh, say that my, my, two, my two grandfathers have inspired me. Uh, my sister is in the audience here today, Shalini, and so she'll understand what I'm talking about. But uh, my uh, Nana Ji, my maternal grandfather, he worked hard all day, and then at night, by candlelight, he studied, and he became an engineer. And he, he did very well for himself, but he never bragged. He was very modest. And my second uh, grandfather, my Dadaji, he, he saved my father when my father was a child, as well as members of her family from being killed in partition in India in 1947. And he was very brave. So both of these men taught me the value of hard work, of individual effort, and of protecting your family. So uh, although they are dead, I do feel their presence. and. I, f I see God in everyone. I'm a religious person. I see God in Muslims. I see God in leftists. I think that when, <laughs> when we started this group, the Canadian Patriotic Society, uh, and I'm so blessed to have fun people working with me, uh, we met once a week at a church basement for eight weeks, and we managed to pull this off. And there are events happening in three other cities as well, in Edmonton, uh, where Cotter may actually be uh, going. Uh, there was uh, one of his lawyers has uh, offered him a place in ed education, as well as in, in uh, Abbotsford, BC, and uh, in Montreal. So today is a day uh, where there's actually four places in Canada having simultaneous protests about Omar Cotter, and we're showing a unified front. Um, but as I was saying, when I was working with our group, we, you know, we didn't want him back, and we wanted him tried for treason. And we, we do have two petitions at the back if you can sign them, uh, if you agree with them. Uh, we began to really realize that he's just a symptom of uh, of a larger problem, of a larger sickness in society, and that's the left and the leadership of the left, not necessarily everyone who votes for the left, uh, the left and the Islamists. And uh, even recently, uh, I believe there was. Um, a Muslim event in Ottawa where uh, the NDP and Liberals co-sponsored it as well as Irfan Canada and um, Human Concern International which was Papa Cotter's bogus charity which raised money for Al-Qaeda a number of years ago so one of the bloggers broke the story so this is a perfect example of the left and the Islamists uh, there was also an anthology called Omar Cotter or Canada and uh, Two of the contributors to that, uh, one of them, Gail Davidson, she's associated with Tides Foundation, George Soros Group, and um, Shima Khan from CARE Canada also uh, contributed to that. And CARE, the Council on American and Islamic Relations in the States, has uh, you know been uh, indicted as a, a co-conspirator in, in a terror funding trial. So there's a lot of money behind these people. Uh, they're very organized. Um, and it's going to get worse. They're consolidating their, their media work is through the OIC, um, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. But what I what I feel is that 
if I can do this, and I'm a very simple person, um, I'm a technophobe, uh, when someone tweets me, I don't even know what that means. So, uh, I mean, if I can do this, then I think anyone can. I just, our group has reached a point where um, we're just willing to protest, we're willing to go on the street. We're not vigilantes, but we're, we've just had a, enough of these elites, these paid lobbyists and these academics that uh, they're really out of touch with the average Canadian. And I'm tired of this moral inversion where an Al-Qaeda terrorist has become a hero. And uh, thank you. And uh, the victim or victims uh, are ignored. And I just want to point out that uh, Dr. Michael Lohner had 73 undisputed reasons why Omar Khadr is dangerous. And that means they're undisputed even by the defense. And one of the reasons is that he has murdered. And uh, we don't know. He might have killed other people. He might have killed Canadian soldiers. He, he laid bombs. He taught other people to lay bombs. And uh, Gary, Gary Paquin from our Scarborough group has made a wonderful poster in the back. And uh, I had a an email from somebody and he sent us a check for $125 and he, he said I can't come today because it's a 10 hour drive but please buy some flowers. So uh, we have also a lot of seniors that wanted to come tonight but they couldn't because uh, you know they're uh, immobile so we're, we'll try to if possible have transcripts available of the session. So uh, I think we're in for a long haul and uh, we're seeing a lot of Muslim Brotherhood activity here in Canada and our speakers, they've all had experience for years and decades on this issue, far more than myself. For me this has just been a few months, so I'm very honoured that they're here and I want to thank everyone for coming here today.